In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. John 2, 14, 15, and 16. Jesus enters the temple. The passage for today, sometimes called a cleansing of the temple, is one that I have often thought about because of the actions of Jesus. Whenever I read it, I cannot help forming a picture of a Jesus who was anything other than gentle, meek, and mild. Jesus seems to behave in a very uncharacteristic way in this passage. He seems quite aggressive on this occasion. And as I said, far from the gentle Jesus, meek and mild, that we are so often wont to imagine. Jesus came to Jerusalem to participate in one of the great Jewish festivals known as Passover. This was a time when the Jews would recall how their ancestors were delivered from the oppressive regime of Pharaoh under the leadership of Moses. They were rescued. They were saved from oppression, from slavery. And they would always remember that experience at Passover time. It can be said that Jesus created quite a scene, quite a stir on that occasion. Our text says he made a whip and drove out those who were conducting business in the temple, selling animals and birds and exchanging coins. The cleansing of the temple, it is often called. When I think about this incident with Jesus in the temple, I am often led to reflect on what can happen in congregations when things happen that individuals do not like. You may belong to a congregation or a church, and sometimes things happen that people do not like, that upset them, that frustrate them, that annoy them. Now, some people might complain or grumble, but they might remain. Some might simply leave. Some might do something to bring about change. So, I suppose we always have people in those three categories. Jesus had these options available to him. He could have complained. 
about what was going on in the temple and how things had degenerated, deteriorated, and what has become of the temple and how it was being turned into a marketplace. He could have complained or, or grumbled about what was going on. He could have left the temple feeling disappointed or frustrated by what was happening. But what we see in this passage is that Jesus chose to do something. He took action to bring about change. Jesus didn't just walk away. He didn't just get angry and, and, and grumble or complain. He took action. And of course, his action drew a reaction from the authorities, or the powers to be at the temple, wanting to know by what authority, what miracle can you show us? to demonstrate that you have the authority to do what you are doing. And so my question today, my sisters and brothers, is this. What made Jesus act in the way he did? And I believe that it was his love for the temple. Jesus refers to the temple as my father's house. And I want you to know that this is not the first time we hear Jesus referring to the temple in this way. Some years before when Jesus was 12, his parents took him to the temple. You know the story, on their way home, Jesus was nowhere to be found. They searched for him, but could not find him among their relatives and friends. So his parents had to return to Jerusalem, where they found him in the temple, among the, the, the teachers of the law, asking them questions and responding to their questions. And when Jesus' parents told them of their anxiety over him, he said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Of course, in some translations it is, Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Obviously, my friends, Jesus felt a special affinity to the temple, the house of God. It was an integral part of Jewish faith and of Jesus' life. It was to the temple that Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus to do what was the custom according to the law when he was just a baby. They brought him to the temple in order to fulfill the law. And it was on that occasion that they met an old man by the name of Simeon who took Jesus, the baby, in his arms and praised God for the child because Simeon saw in Jesus the fulfillment of God's promise that he was God's Messiah, that through him, God would bring salvation to the world. So it is likely, my friends, that Jesus went to the temple with his parents regularly and learned to love and honor that sacred place and the traditions associated with it. So with endearment, with devotion and, and love, Jesus called the temple my father's house. 
It was a place for worship and prayer. A place that Jesus held there. So it was his love for the temple that must have driven him to drive out those who were there conducting the business that they were carrying on. But there was something else, my friends. It was his love for all people. There is no question that Jesus had a deep love for people. He showed particular concern for people who were on the fringes of society, those who were ostracized or alienated, who were treated as, as outcasts. He showed a special love for such people and reached out to them, tried to bring them in. And here is something that you should know about the temple. There was a section of the temple that was referred to as the court of the Gentiles. This was the area where Gentiles or non-Jews, whenever you see that term Gentiles, it refers to pe persons who were not Jews. So that section of the temple, the court of the Gentiles, was designated for non-Jews. They were permitted to enter there, but they were forbidden to go any further than this section, than this outer court. So that was a place for foreigners, for non-Jews to come and worship. And so Jesus' love for all the people, Jews and non-Jews, moved him to act in the way he did because he observed how the area of the temple set aside for Gentiles, foreigners, non-Jews, where they were permitted to enter and go no further, was being used by those who were selling animals and exchanging money. In other words, the area that was already limited was being encroached upon. They did not have full access to that area. And the business taking place in the temple court did not make it conducive. It affected the, the atmosphere in which those people, those foreigners, those Gentiles could worship. And Jesus knew that the primary purpose of coming to the temple was to worship God. So this drew Jesus' anger. And so he was not pleased. In fact, what was taking place moved Jesus to what we can call righteous indignation. And in response to what he saw, Jesus acted to, to drive those persons out of the temple who were conducting this kind of mis business that prevented the foreigners or the non-Jews from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> and finally, my friends, I believe that what drew this response from Jesus what caused Jesus to act in the way he did was his love for principles. His love for the temple, his love for all people, and his love for principles. The text says, so he made a whip of cords and drove all from the temple courts. Clearly, my friends, Jesus was incensed. He raised a protest. To get a better appreciation for Jesus' action, it is helpful to point out that the sale of animals and the exchange of money in the temple were intended as a convenience for those coming into Jerusalem to observe the Passover. So in one sense, 
it provided um, a good service for pilgrims, for those who had to travel some distance to come to Jerusalem for the Passover so that they could get the animals and they, were, they had to be a certain kind of animal without blemish so that they could get the correct um, currency that they needed to pay the temple tax because it had to be paid in local currency. So the money changers and the, the person selling animals were providing a service, a convenience. But the problem is that those selling animals and those exchanging money were doing so at exorbitant rates and commissions. And it is believed that some of the priests who officiated at the temple were profiting from this business as well. So this became an established business. And of course, persons were very upset when Jesus did what he did. But Jesus couldn't tolerate the injustice the unfairness that had become part of this practice and his love for, for principles drove him to drive out those who were involved in such behavior. Moved him to disrupt this corrupt business that had settled in the temple. Friends, when Jesus entered the temple on that occasion, it couldn't be business as usual. Because when Jesus is present, it becomes business unusual. As he upset the status quo and disrupted what had become a settled and accepted institution in the temple, Jesus could not turn a blind eye to what he saw to the injustice, to the corruption that was going on. He couldn't just walk away. So he acted and made a difference. In today's reading, we see Jesus driving out those who were engaging in negative and corrupt practices. And turning things upside down. And I dare say, my friends, that sometimes a lot of things need to be turned upside down. Actually, a lot of things are already upside down. A lot of values are already upside down. And so when Jesus comes, his turning things over is actually an attempt to turn things the right side up. So he wanted to preserve the sanctity of worship and uphold the cherished principles of justice and, and fairness. And as always, my friends, Jesus is concerned not only with the externals of worship, but with the heart of the worshiper. There's a text in the Bible that reminds us of some people who have a form of godliness, but who deny the power thereof. And in that text, Timothy is warned by Paul to turn away from all such persons who have a form of godliness, but who deny the power thereof. And so, my sisters and brothers, I say to you today that the primary purpose for coming to the temple is to offer true worship to God. Anything that stands in the way of this is to be abhorred and rejected. As followers of Jesus, we are called to love God's house, to love all people, and to stand for principle. So as Jesus 
cleansed the temple on that occasion, let us open ourselves to his presence so that he may inwardly purify us, that we may become agents of purification in this world and with courage, with passion, and with zeal, let us go to stand for what is right, to stand up for principles, for justice, and those things that are in keeping with God's will. Let us go then to be like Jesus and not to turn a blind eye to the things that are not just, that are not true, that are not right. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.